Hello, hello, and welcome to the ABCs of Leadership Etiquette. My name is Tia Young, and I'm the founder of Tia Young Image and Etiquette. I help my clients learn the soft skills for success through professional development and etiquette training. Thank you so much for joining me. Let me pull up my slides. All right, here we go. The ABCs of leadership etiquette. Now, this is the deep dive from the five senses of leadership etiquette, the keynote. So this is a 45-minute workshop to help you go from the ABCs all the way to your PhD of leadership etiquette. Now, I did want to share some of the leadership roles that I have held over the years, and it's been quite a bit. I'm a little bit older. I'm over 50, so I have had experience with several different things uh, growing as a leader, and of course, certain ones I do, didn't do very well in. So let's start aerobics instructor. Yes, actually, uh, I'm not a dance instructor at all, but one of my mom's friends when I was about 14 or 15 years old, one of her instructors could not um, come to the class she was teaching at the YMCA. So I was asked to replace her uh, during her absence. And I was the leader of the class and had no idea what I was doing. So I just made up some moves. So I was a leader in a sense, but I wasn't a good leader because I didn't know really the role. I just kind of made up some moves and they enjoyed it. So it worked. I also was a choir business manager. I attended the University of Florida, go Gators. And um, I wasn't a soloist, so I wasn't a leader in that sense. But as far as uh, the business side of the gospel choir, when we would travel to different cities and different states to sing and perform, I was able to handle that job. And I think I did a pretty good, pretty good job in, in that area. Retail manager, when I graduated from college in, with a degree in communications, I had no idea what I wanted to do and who I wanted to be as a leader. So uh, because I kind of fell back on retail because the summer jobs I had uh, during the summers from college, I would work at the mall. So my first job was at a department store as a manager in certain departments. So I enjoyed that role, but ended up getting fired because um, it's, it's very important in, on the plan from how much they expect you to make uh, in that particular particular department and I do, didn't do very well in that and I got fired. I was also a modeling coach for Barb Zahn, teaching poise, posture to young ladies, probably ages um, 10 up to 18. And I really enjoyed that teaching, modeling, etiquette and acting. Flight attendant trainer, you know, I mentioned before in the keynote that I am a former United Airlines flight attendant. I flew for 14 years. Um, but also during that time, I was a trainer for a couple years uh, in 98 and 99. So I enjoyed that. And I was considered their leader uh, while I was there. They were there for seven whole weeks at the training center in Chicago. So um, I had to be a role model in a sense for them. Wife and mother, of course, the best role in the world to be a, a wife and mother. I am married to Victor Young and we have three wonderful daughters, Jordan, Taylor and Anita and two granddaughters, Sophia and Olivia. Uh, yes, I'm a grandma uh, and, and, and that's the best job in the world being wife and mother. And of course, you're a leader in those roles. You have to set the example and set the tone. Elementary teacher, yes, I was a second grade teacher. So the ABCs uh, of leadership etiquette uh, and uh, we're gonna go over some adjectives that describe the words and some nouns that the elementary students uh, would have learned at that age. I taught second grade and I loved it. I loved it. I was their leader and I had, had a couple students that, you know, called me mom. They just really, really enjoyed me as their teacher. And I really liked that uh, part of being a teacher, but I only did it for one year. <laughs> uh, it wasn't for me. Uh, also, business owner and CEO. Of course, I'm the founder uh, and the owner of Tia Young Image and Etiquette my etiquette business, and I've been doing this now for over 20 years, and I love it. It's my passion. It's the kind of job you, I can do without getting paid. Of course, you know I want to get paid, but uh, because I love it so much and it's my passion, I can do it, you know, anytime for free, uh, and, and the time just flies by. Bible study and uh, BBS, Vacation Bible uh, School leader as well at church, uh, years ago, and I really, really enjoyed that. And then more recently, a women's Bible study leader 
I had in my home once a month. So being a leader in that area, and, and when it comes to church and religion, you know, you really have, have uh, you're held at a higher standard, just like a leader is, but we want to make sure we're representing ourselves well and living what we're, we're teaching. Charity event chairperson, I was on a board at a hospital and we had a, a annual uh, fundraiser for the foundation and I was the chair for that. And we brought in uh, uh, the uh, awesome earth, wind and fire for that. So I was excited and, and pleased how everything turned out. We ended up raising about $2 million. So I was proud of that and proud to be a leader in that sense. Miss Mompreneur. Yes, I'm a queen also. Um, I won the title of Miss Mompreneur in 2017. So when you're representing an organization, it was called the MCA organization, Miss Corporate America organization, but they had an arm called Mompreneur where I was voted in and given a crown uh, because of um, my example of being a great mom and entrepreneur. So I'm proud to serve in that role. And you have to be held to a higher standard as well when you're a queen representing a particular organization. So that was a lot of fun. Speaker, trainer, mentor, and coach, all those things I really enjoy doing. But as a mentor, you'll be, you're being uh, watched and followed uh, like an apprenticeship. So you're helping a mentee uh, be better in whatever areas they need help in. So I really, really enjoy that role. I'm with the John Maxwell team and, and serve in some of those roles there. Networking organization director. Yes, I'm doing a lot. I didn't realize I uh, did so much, but I'm a, a director, a uh, support director, Business Network International, BNI, uh, launch director and support director. I was for a few years and now I'm just a launch director in my area in Florida. Organization VP, program chair and chaplains. I'm a member of a couple women's social organizations, Shaq and Jill and the Links Incorporated, and I serve in, in several roles with those uh, different organizations. Now I've graduated out of Jack and Jill. My daughter uh, graduated from high school and now is in college. Um, so I, I don't serve in Jack and Jill. I'm considered an associate member now. Uh, I'm an etiquette book author. Yes, I have wrote my first book in 2019 called How to Navigate premium experiences with confidence, your guide to social success. So it's available on Amazon, but because you're here, I'll have a free download for you uh, of my book, but you'll have to wait to the end to find out how to get that. So I appreciate you being here at my workshop. Uh, etiquette podcast host, you know, COVID really uh, hurt all of us. We were kind of stuck at home. So why not try something new? And that's what I did. I became a podcast host of my own uh, podcast called Normal to Formal, and it can be found on any of your favorite podcast platforms. And of course, I'm still learning and growing in that area. And uh, it's just me, and I'm just talking about different um, etiquette topics. And I'm up to, I think, episode 26. So it's coming along, and I appreciate your support. So as you see, I've served a lot of different roles, some good, some bad. I did good in some, and I didn't do so good in others or got fired. But that's that, that's how it is. You learn, you grow, you move on, and you do better the next time. With age, hopefully, you get a little bit better with wisdom as well. Now, here we go, the ABCs to PhD of leadership etiquette. And I just want to have a little fun because I am a former second grade teacher only for one year, but I was an elementary teacher. So um, I'm going to show you three words on each page for each letter. So I want you to get out a piece of paper and make uh, three columns. One word will be the elementary school word because you know you always have what's called a word wall. So every day they learn a new word and we put that on the bulletin board. Uh, so those kind of words will be first. And then I'm going to give you a high school word and that's for leadership, the things that we're trying to do as leaders. And then the third word will be college level. That means how to incorporate that leadership and etiquette. So another word to help you um, be a better, um, good, have better manners, so to speak. So just a little bit fun. So you'll be a graduate by the end of this workshop. All right, here we go. The letter A, of course, apple there for the elementary column. And then as a leader, the word approachable. You know, I'm a former flight attendant. So it was so important when passengers came on board for me to have a smile on my face, right? Welcome them aboard. Welcome. Thank you so much. Let me help you find your seat. Approachable. Having that face that was friendly, that people felt comfortable 
coming to you to ask questions. Now, it's very important when during the flight, there's some turbulence and the captain says, okay, flight attendants have a seat. So even though we're seated, sometimes the passengers can still see us if you're up front and it's called a jump seat. So the first class passengers can see the flight attendant. And when we hit those bumps in the air, so to speak, they will look at my face to see, okay, if she's not freaking out, therefore we're okay. So having that approachable face, even though I might've had butterflies in my stomach, um, I always made sure it didn't look like it on my face. So I always have that pleasant face and be approachable. And then for et etiquette, uh, that third column, apologize. When things don't go quite your way, it's your fault. It might not be your fault, but always say, I'm sorry and apologize for whatever it is. Um, we'll find out the details later, but start out with that. I'm sorry that this happened. You know, what can I do to make it better? Always apologize. Letter B, ball for those elementary students. For leadership, be brave, be brave. People will come, they will attack. You're gonna be the ones that get the brunt of everything. Problems, they will come to you, but be brave. It's tough, I know. Uh, to be brave in certain situations, especially if some kind of scandal may be going on. But like I said before, have that face of confidence and um, handle it, handle it uh, right away and don't let it snowball into something bigger. Be brave. And of course, with etiquette and behavior, people are watching any and everything that you do in person, on the phone, social media, text, calls, they're watching you. So as the leader with great etiquette skills, your behavior is on point at all times. All right, C for cat. <laughs> Credibility. We want to know that you mean what you say. Credibility. When you say you're going to do something, do it. If you say you are someone, you have 10 PhDs, I know that's, you know, not, it's possible, but I'm sure people won't do that. Uh, you can back that up with transcripts. So always, always, always be honest and credible. Follow up and be the best uh, business person you can and a leader. And as far as etiquette, the word civility, that means being civil. You know, when we were growing up and you're out at the grocery store and um, not behaving and trying to go, oh, mommy, mommy, I want this. And uh, just being civilized, she, you know, she'll tell us, please act civilized while we're in here. <laughs> so having that civility. All right, D, D for dog, for those elementary students. D uh, for leadership daily agenda, what you do on a daily basis, you will get better at. For instance, if you want to try to do something better, you have to do it on a daily basis to get in that routine of doing it better. Maybe something as simple, simple as being on time. If you have to be to work at eight o'clock in the morning and you know you're going to have a lot of traffic, you may have to leave 15 minutes to 30 minutes earlier than you normally would because it's always going to be something that comes up at the last minute accident on the road, um, you misplace your phone, now you have to run back in the house to get it. So your daily agenda. So do it on a regular basis and keep it consistent because I have it to take that herd, what, 21 days or 21 times to do something consecutively to make it a habit. I uh, wanted to work out on a regular basis this summer. So what I did was set, post it that I'm gonna do 30 minutes a day for 30 days straight. It seems easy, but some days I just didn't feel like it, but I did it and I made it a habit. So even when I went on vacation uh, out of town, I still went to the gym at the hotel and worked out because it was a habit at that time. And I want to be healthy and, and stay in shape. Also, that etiquette word is dignity. You want to have dignity in everything you do, pride and dignity in everything you do. E Eagle. Also for the leader, be encouraging. People will make mistakes. Um, they will do things wrong, the wrong way. Instead of berating them, encourage them to do it, to help them actually. You want, might wanna help them or have someone help them, but encourage them that they can do it. And it might take a little more time, but they can but be that encouraging leader. And then elegance, elegance. You know, this is for the ladies though. So I always wanna have that elegant appearance your look, your hair, your nails, your skin, the way you carry yourself. And funny story, um, I was vacationing several years, well, 
15 years ago in London, I had a friend that lived there. And uh, during the summertime, I was on break vacationing and I entered a pageant, you know, on a whim. She was doing the hair, she was the hairstylist for the pageant. And I entered and I won the pageant and the title was Miss Elegant. So, and I still have that uh, crown as well. So always want to carry yourself with e elegance for the ladies. F, fish for the elementary school students, for the leader, faithful, whatever that might mean to you. I'm a woman of faith. Um, not ashamed to say that, but faithful in what you do, what you say. So having faith in the abilities of employees, having faith in your business and in yourself. So being faithful. Then the leadership side, formality. A lot of times um, we encounter situations that we've never had before. My book helps with that. As you move up the ladder of success, you'll be in situations you've never been in before. A formal dining etiquette session. It might be six, seven courses. Do you know what to do in those settings? I can help you with that. But formality is greater the higher you uh, move up the ladder of success. Giraffe is our elementary word. Isn't it cute? Or she? Generous, be generous with, when I think of generous, I think of money, you know, giving financially to a charity or organization or people that are in need, but be generous with your time also, especially employees and your family. You have to kind of balance and harmonize uh, having, um, being generous, um, but you got to make sure the people that are the most important in your life that you are generous to them and good manners. I couldn't take that G and not use good manners. And I love the quote, good manners will open doors that the best education cannot. And I love that one because you can get smarter and smarter and smarter and get your PhD. You're right, ABC, the PhD. I don't have a PhD. <laughs> oh goodness. You know, I would love to have one, but it'd be Dr. T. I love the sound of that, but um, I don't. But like I'm saying, the way you carry yourself with good manners will take you some time and open more doors, you know, um, based on what the situation is. So always, always use your good manners. H for house. Also, I love humble. Humble. No matter how successful you become, no matter what position you may have, always humble yourself. Don't make yourself seem more superior than anyone else. Even though your title might dictate that, you don't want people to feel like they're inferior to you or less than because of who you are, who you think you are. Uh, but humble, humble, humble yourself. And humorous as a leader in etiquette also, humorous. People love to laugh, you know, breaking the ice, joking, not too much. Meaning you don't wanna hurt feelings or any kind of ethnic jokes or racial jokes or anything like that. But humor is just something funny that everyone can enjoy and laugh about. Icicle, icicle, you know, I'm from Florida. So that's something I rarely ever see, an icicle. Um, for the leader, influence. You will have a lot of influence uh, among those that you lead. So make sure that influence is positive at all times. And etiquette wise, be interesting. What makes you different you know, than someone else? Be interesting. Uh, like I said, humorous, interesting, those things. So not just the monotone person that doesn't smile, doesn't have any fun. So a little bit of interest, whatever that may be. J for jellyfish. <clears throat> also justifiable, justifiable as a leader. You wanna make sure you can justify your actions, um, your decisions that you make and share with your employees, staff members as the leader, uh, organization, make sure you can justify those things. Then joyful, you know, I love all these fun adjectives, um, but be joyful. You try to be joyful at all times. I know things might not always be, a, be positive, but always try to be joyful. Hi, our elementary word. Keen, you know how people have a, a keen sense of um, leadership, a keen sense of, you know how you have that gut feeling, that keen sense of knowing that something good is about to happen. 
you know, you, I, I, I love when like three th bad things have happened in a day. You say, okay, thank you, God, because I know something good <laughs> is about to happen. Because sometimes things just happen back to back to back. And you're like, what's going on here? Not in a really, really bad way, but just little things here and there. Uh, so having a keen sense in any way, but uh, just being more aware. Uh, that's what keen means. And kind. It's such a simple, short word, but be kind in what you do, who you are, what you say. Lemon, lemon, make got lemons, make lemonade. Uh, for the leader, that's your title. L for leader. You are the leader of the group, uh, the leader of the bunch. So make sure you wear that title well. Loyal, be loyal. Are your people that are following you loyal to you or are they looking to jump ship and, and go somewhere else? If there's any kind of issues, um, you don't sense loyalty with some people that are following you. Um, you might have to brainstorm, talk, and figure out what's going on. Ask questions. And don't just assume everything is good. Because you want that loyalty. You want people to be there for you. So having, having that loyalty is very important. Moon. Motivate. The leader motivates the team to be successful. When things are going great, you motivate to keep that momentum, that's another M word. And when things aren't going so well, you motivate to help them bring them back up. Motivate. Manners, here we go again. You know, manners is so important. There's good, there's bad manners, but of course we're focusing on all the good manners. Uh, there's a scripture called train up and child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. So you want to start with those manners at an early age. Um, common courtesies, I always like to share. Please, thank you. I'm sorry. You're welcome. And excuse me. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yes, sir. No, sir. Back in the day, it was mandatory <laughs> to say, you know, yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yes, sir. No, sir. Um, it's not as popular now, but you always want to show respect. So when someone does say to me, um, they call me ma'am, even though I'm you know, old enough for them to call me ma'am. I don't correct them because I appreciate that they have that upbringing, that they actually are saying ma'am to me because they respect me and they were brought up in a way to respect uh, older people or elders or women or whatever, whatever it may be. Manners, great manners at all times. And for nails, also as a leader, you want to be neat. Neat in what way, you ask? Neat in your appearance, neat in the way you lead, neat in um, the way you organize meetings. Your office should be neat and organized. And if you're not neat, because I need help with certain things, so you might have to hire people to do the things that you might not be as good as to keep you on task, focused on the leadership. So you might have to add people along the way that can help you if you can afford it um, to help you in certain ways if you're not as neat as you want to be in certain areas of your leadership. And nice, you know, another short, sweet word, just be nice. Just be nice. Doing things for other people really makes you feel just as good as they feel. You know, you feel good on the inside when you do something nice for someone else. So always try to do something nice, even if it's a stranger, even a smile, a compliment. I love giving compliments, especially to other women. I love their outfit, their makeup, their hair. Oh, girl, I love that dress you have on. And I don't ask where they have it from. Now, you don't want to deep dive too much and ask, where do you get that from? Now, most times they will share, girl, look at this, you know, on sale at Nordstrom's or whatever it may be. So always building that rapport. Even if it's a stranger with someone, it just, it just will make their day because you never know what kind of day they have been having. So be nice. Orange for those elementary students, for the leader, overseer. That's your title as well. You are the overseer seer of everything that's going on. When things go bad, guess where everybody's going to come? To the leader. It will always go to the leader. Good, bad, ugly, it will come back to the leader. So you're overseeing it. Make sure you know what's going on, depending on how large the people you are, how many people you're leading, 
you'll need help with that, but make sure you, you know what's going on. You're not just sitting in your office and not on the floor, so to speak, seeing exactly what's going on. Optimistic. Do you see the glass half empty or half full? I see the glass half full. Be optimistic. You never know how the outcome is going to be, but always be optimistic. Carrot. It's a beautiful carrot, colorful. The leader is always professional, professional in everything they do when they are working. Even outside of work, you still have a reputation to uphold, but be professional in your dress and um, the way you interact with others, employees, customers, clients. Be professional, timely, return calls promptly and those kind of things. Professionalism, I can help there also. Business etiquette is something that I also offer. And polite. I love that word. Just be polite, kind, nice. All these wonderful words, polite. Queen. That cue there stands for queen. And I'm not a chess player, but uh, that's a chess piece of the queen. Uh, as a leader, you're qualified. Whatever got you to that, that, that leadership role, you were qualified to be there. And if you're not qualified to be there and you ended up in the role, it won't last. Just like I got fired when I was in <laughs> my first job in retail management. I was qualified at the time, but I wasn't qualified uh, when I didn't make the numbers that I needed to make. And quick-witted, just being funny, laughing at yourself. Don't take yourself so seriously. Um, but you don't want to hurt feelings, you know, um, when you're being quick with it, making sure there's any kind of jokes that would hurt feelings. R, raccoon, little cutie raccoon there. A leader is also reliable. When you say you're going to do something or be somewhere, be reliable and do it. It's all part of that trust also, being reliable as the leader. Respect. Respect goes a long way. We want respect for ourselves. We have to give respect to get respect back. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Rita Franklin. And I'm not going to sing for you because I'm not a singer. Remember, I wasn't a soloist in the gospel choir. I was a business manager. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Okay, I'll give you a little bit. See? R. S. Sun. That's beautiful sun, too. As a leader, you serve. You serve a servant leader. I took a, uh, at my church, I took a year uh, and it was called, uh, we were servant leaders, but it's called Next Level Leadership at, here at Grace Family Church. And uh, every Wednesday I was learning how to be a servant leader, to be able to lead also at the church and then be a Bible study leader and that kind of thing. But serve, serve others. Don't always expect, but actually serve. And social graces, Normally you hear that around women, um, social graces, the elegance, carrying yourself a certain way, sitting properly, uh, crossing your ankles instead of at your you know, knees when you're sitting, when you have a dress on, um, making sure you're not slouching. All those things are considered social graces. P tomato. Uh, as a leader, we need to trust. We need to trust you. Trust that you're going to do what you say you're going to do and trust that we're going to be safe as a company or as, as the, uh, following you. Because if we, you go one way, we're all following you. We want it to be successful. So we need to have that trust in you and your abilities. And for etiquette, thoughtful. Always try to be thoughtful. If you know someone loves a certain item, um, and when it's their birthday, you remember what it was and you got that form. A certain store they like, let's say, and you get them a gift card to that particular store uh, or bonuses at work. Maybe having a contest where you challenge uh, each other to do certain things and the winners will get a certain prize. So being thoughtful in that area. You umbrella, umbrella. This time of year is a lot of rain during the summertime. So make sure you have your umbrella for the elementary students. Now, uh, understanding as a leader, you have to understand things come up, things happen. Um, people call in all the time that uh, call in sick um, and may not really be sick or just understanding that they might be going through, they might've had some kind of a death in the family. So understanding that they might not be able to make it to work. 
because um, they're mourning or they might be the husband and the wife are delivering. Even though the wife delivered, the husband wants to be there for his wife. So understand he might need that extra time off as well. <laughs> and then also unique. What's unique about you? I love bright colors. Um, so that's one thing about me that I enjoy. I love bright colors. I love complimenting people. Um, I love travel, you know, exotic des destinations that are warm. So that's a uh, little thing that's neat about, and my name is Tia, T-I-A. Uh, I'm a, you know, former, former flight attendant, but Tampa International Airport, I help people remember who I am by saying that. Tampa International Airport, that's me, Tia. V based. And Alita is a visionary. They think of the lot, a lot of the great ideas for the organization or company, a visionary, visionary. And sometimes you might have people that work for you that are also visionaries and you can brainstorm to come up with new uh, and exciting ideas for the company. And versatile, doesn't work one way, try another, be versatile and not be so stuck on one idea uh, and, and be open to change. So being versatile in that way. Watermelon, very good this time of year. It looks delicious. A leader is also world-class. What do you want to be world-class for? World-class leader in etiquette. You know, that's what I want to be, a world-class leader in etiquette. But I need your help. I need your help with that. Um, warm-hearted. Oh, it's so important to have a warm heart, to touch someone's heart. Are the things you say, the things you do. Um, so always having a warm heart and not a cold heart, being you know, abrupt with people and curt and not tactful. So having that warm heart goes a long way. X-ray, you know, so hard to find <laughs> words that start with the letter X, but I did it. I did it. X-ray for the kids, you know, like a skeleton right there. X factor. As a leader, do you have the X factor? That's just being extraordinary, the X factor. We want that kind of leader around us at all times. It might take a lot of time to grow to be that, but that's the ultimate goal to have that X factor. And X Xenial. I think I said that right. I'm sorry. I practiced and then I forgot. Xenial. Yes, there we go. Xenial. And Xenial means, let me look at my notes real quick because I did write it down. Xenial means warm, welcoming, and hospitable. I'm glad I wrote that down because I had forgotten already. But y'all are family, y'all understand, right? Zenio, <laughs> warm, welcoming, and hospitable. We always want to be that. When people pop over at the house without calling, oh, I was in the neighborhood. You know, that's one thing I really don't like, but that's why I try to keep my house halfway decent <laughs> and then have a little snack or whatever or, or drink for them to have when they get here. Yarn, colorful yarn there. Yielding, yielding. As a leader, you want to be yielding and don't rush, you know, just like the yellow light, yield. Is that the sign, the caution sign, um, the red and white sign is, says yield, but be yielding. Let me slow down a little bit. Take a look at your surroundings. Make sure everything's going as you will want them to go. So make sure you're yielding. Young at heart. Young at heart, you know, as we go, we can't change getting older, but we can still be young at heart. So we want to always practice being young at heart. Certainly if you have younger kids, grandkids, play with them. And as, and as a leader, um, the young folks, the millennials, you know, they're constantly on their technology. But learn some of those little games and fun things. You know, I don't, you know, I'm Facebook and Instagram. But the Snapchats and all the other things I really don't do. But you know, I have the app, but I really don't use it. But maybe you have a young um, staff members or you know associates. Try to connect with them in that way because that's what they enjoy. And Z zebra, zebra, beautiful, beautiful zebra. Be zealous. Be zealous. Having zeal having zeal and enthusiasm and excitement as a leader and zany. Like I said, have fun and be zany. Not too crazy now, <laughs> not too crazy, but some fun. So let down your hair. Don't always be so, you know, 
stiff and you know and strict or whatever but be saying at times and have fun and joke around just like being humorous all right that was the abc's to phd of leadership etiquette i hope you took great notes and it's so many great terms there that we can use you know nobody's all those things we can just strive to be better in certain situations and as a leader and if you're not there as a leader yet those are some things that you strive to be those adjectives um just a lot of fun using those nouns for the elementary and then the leader and the etiquette the leadership etiquette so you went from elementary school and high school to college and got your PhD. So congratulations. And just for being here, I have a free gift for you. But I do need you to go to my website, tiayoungimage.com. That's tiayoungimage.com. And click on Tia Young Speaks tab, and then it'll take you to the page. And it'll show you exactly how to download your free book, How to Navigate Premium Experiences with Confidence, your guide to social success. It's been a pleasure. Once again, congratulations on uh, getting your PhD in leadership etiquette. We took you from elementary all the way to college and your PhD, learning about how to be a great leader uh, and using great manners at the same time. It has been wonderful. Thank you so much. And I want, you to, I want to connect with you. This is my book cover there. It's on Amazon for $15.99. But for you, you can download it for free once you visit the website. And I also have coaching sessions available for you. Um, I have one starting in September, an eight-week session. Eight, one hour, one week, each week for eight weeks on etiquette. All the different types of etiquette. Uh, as a business professional, CEO, entrepreneur for men and women. So let's connect, tiayoungimage.com. My email directly is tia at tiayoungimage.com. That's my cell number there. And my social media, most of them are Mrs. Tia Young, but on LinkedIn, it's Mrs. Manor. So I'd love to hear from you. Let me know how I can improve and get better because I'm always wanting to get better in any and every way. So thank you again so much. And let me stop sharing so I can say goodbye in a proper way. All right. Thank you all so much for joining me. I look forward to connecting with you. And I'm here to answer any questions. And I would love to hear what you thought of the presentation. Thank you so much. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.